On a teeny tiny budget and in today's video I cannot wait to share with you six DIY Dollar Tree and Trash to Treasure makeover crafts so I cannot wait to share this video with you all I have been crafting up a storm since I've been safe at home so if you guys are like me go ahead and plug in those glue guns get out your glitter and paint and let's get to crafting First DIY tutorial, the supplies you will need are a grapevine wreath or really any wreath form, some greenery. I am going to use this greenery that I found at Michael's a couple of months ago. I have these fairy lights. I believe I picked them up at the Target Dollar Spot and some wire, some wire clippers or some dull scissors. You don't want to dull your ribbon scissors. I'm going to use these wire cutters that I stole from my husband's toolbox and I'm going to use some ribbon. What we're going to do is we're going to create an outdoor chandelier. Now if you don't have a spot to put this outdoor chandelier, you guys can also use this inside. Wait till you see what I'm up to. So I'm starting out with this grapevine wreath base that I found at the thrift store and I'm just going to go ahead and add the garland greenery to the top and then I'm clipping off some pieces of wire and just wiring that on. I measured about 8 to 10 inches between each part of the greenery and it just added wire. That way my greenery would stay on there nice and good and I wasn't for sure if I wanted to use this inside or outside but I wanted it to be nice and secure in case I do put it outside I won't have any greenery flopping off so just continue to add your greenery in and around your wreath form base now this is such a great project to repurpose and reuse any old grapevine wreath or you can even use one of the wreath bases that you've been using for Christmas and add some greenery to that just find whatever wreath base you guys have and grab some greenery and go to town wiring on some beautiful green or florals. Now that all the greenery is wired on, I'm taking these fairy lights I found at the Target Dollar Spot. You can also find them at Dollar Tree. And the spots where I had wired the greenery on, I'm just wiring on top of that. So I'm just adding in the lights. So I'm just gonna go in and around my wreath base to add some really beautiful twinkling fairy lights to create this beautiful garden chandelier. So fun, fabulous, and so easy to do. fairy lights are on I'm just taking this lace and I'm tying it on to either side of my grapevine wreath base I'm double knotting it and just making it long enough so it will hang and then I'm kind of testing it out to see how it will hang and then I'm taking another piece of lace and I'm adding that to the other side of my little garland wreath and I found that it worked perfectly so I just tied it on the other side and I made them come up together at a point but this is so fun and fabulous and I've always wanted to create um, an outdoor garden wreath and I have a surprise for you guys too coming up for the fall season and the Christmas season we're going to do some more of these and I have some different ideas for them so definitely stay tuned for some fun and fabulous DIYs in the next seasons using this same idea. Once 
once I had all of that finished, I decided to go a little bit extra, a little bit over the top. If you guys know me, I love my florals. And so I'm just taking some of this Walmart lavender. It was 99 cents a bundle and I just clipped it apart to make it little smaller branches. And then I'm taking that and poking that into the grapevine wreath base. Again, if you're gonna put this outside, you may want to go ahead and wire it on. But I did decide that I was probably gonna go ahead and use this um, in this pretty little area I'm gonna share with you guys in just a moment so I just did just go ahead and poke it in so it fit pretty nicely that way so I'm using this lavender that I had already on hand but again you guys use whatever colors you love you could get really crazy with us I even think I want to do one with some beautiful roses overflowing I think would be absolutely gorgeous And Mr. Romantic came to my rescue. I decided to hang it in my crafting studio. It was just too pretty not to have something beautiful to look at every day while I'm crafting. And so he just hung a hook from the ceiling. And here it is. I love how it reflects off the mirror and then with the beautiful green curtains. And then I also want to share with you guys, here is how it would look outside. I have this little area on my back porch that I can also hang it from, or I might even get a wild hair and create another one. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to take three Dollar Tree garden planters. I already have one painted white, and then I'm going to take these other two and paint them white as well. What I want to create is a three-tiered garden topiary, but I want this to be inside my home. I really need some garden inside my home to lift my spirits and brighten my day. Comment if you guys feel me on that one. So I'm just taking some Waverly white chalk paint. Um, really any paint will do if you're going to be using it inside. If you're going to be using it outside, you'll need to use an outdoor paint and seal it. But again, this one's going to be inside. So I'm just giving it a huge heavy dose of the Waverly white chalk paint. So to create my three-tier potted plant, I am going to go ahead and add a large piece of Dollar Tree Styrofoam to the bottom of the pot. And then I decided to take that first layer out and add in some brown craft paper to really stabilize that Styrofoam. I'm rationing my Styrofoam right now because I'm trying to use everything that I have on hand. So as you guys can see that that brown craft paper works miracles on this project. Now I did decide to go ahead and add some hot glue and then then the smaller pot. This is going to be my second tier layer and you're going to need to use quite a bit of hot glue. Now I'm going to use another piece of Dollar Tree styrofoam and pop that in to this second tier to then add the third tier. Now if you guys have seen these in stores they're super expensive even for the fake planted variety but if you guys are doing this outside you may want to add a wooden dowel down through the center of your pots. Again this is going to be inside so I'm not too worried about it. Um, I am going to go ahead though and now do my favorite part which
which is the arranging of the flowers. I'm using some Dollar Tree onion grass at the very top and I'm just going to go ahead and pop that in to the styrofoam and then I'm using lamb's ear on the other side. When I do these three tiered pots, I really love to add in my greenery first and then add in my florals second. And I wasn't for sure if I was going to add florals, but I decided that that would definitely be a good option. So I'm continuing to work greenery in and around the potted plant. I decided to go in with some beautiful florals. I have these white Gruber daisies on hand and then I'm also layering in some pale pink tulips. I am loving this so far. I think the pink tulips just give me that pretty dainty kind of shabby chic romantic vibe um, with that hint of spring and just a little bit of sweetness. Again, this is going in my crafting studio. I really wanted it to feel like it was spring and summer inside here and this is just making my heart smile so much so i'm balancing the pink tulips i'm adding several into one side and then offsetting them on the nether with some more pink tulips So I just popped this three-tiered happy beautiful floral on top of my little cherub planter. It has this little shell bowl that comes up. I got it at an auction years ago, but I have tried to source some similar planters and put them in my Amazon store for you all. And I am just over the moon loving the softness and beauty of the shabby chic. Now for the next DIY, I'm going to take this large, it's kind of like a toolbox um, planter. I found it at the thrift store for $3 and then these two Dollar Tree painted scrolly gates. These are so beautiful. If you guys see them, grab them. Um, I had painted them white and then I'm just going to add in this greenery. Again, this was from Michaels. All of this was at the beginning of the spring, so hopefully they have something similar. I'm also trying to link similar items into my Amazon store. Store. If you all are like me right now, you're probably just only doing online shopping for your decor and your goodies. But anyway, I just pop this garland in and then again, I'm going for a really beautiful shabby chic feel. And so I'm using this vintage um, angel that I had painted and left outside. So it kind of got really chippy and vintagey looking. And then I added another cherub and then this pretty little candelabra with um, the dripping little crystal bubble shades at the top. Again, I will try to link some in my Amazon store as well. Dolly Tree DIY. I'm going to share with you all how to create a beautiful garden planter wall hanging. I'm going to take two of the little scrolly garden gates and then two of the little silver garden planters, some Waverly white chalk paint, a paintbrush, and then some wire cutters and some wire. Now to get started on this project, I'm just going to go ahead and also select some florals of choice. And then I'm going to take the garden gates and line them up and I'm going to put one on one end and one on the other. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my wire and my wire cutters and just begin to wire these two frames together. Now, if you all have zip ties, you could also zip tie these. But again, I don't have any zip ties, so I'm just using what I already have on hand. So I'm just trimming down some pieces of wire. And then you're going to begin to wire this center part. That way it's nice and secure and your little garden planters will hang on this nicely without slipping around. So just take and twist tie the wire together and you're going to do this at all of the little support spaces.
once I had everything wired on, I'm just gonna take a craft knife and cut little slits in my little garden planters. I had painted them and also distressed them with a bit of black paint. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut little slits, as you guys can see, for my wires to go through. So you'll need two slits on each side of your garden planters. And then I'm gonna take this styrofoam and I'm just hot gluing a small piece of styrofoam inside of here. I thought originally that I was gonna use a lot of different florals, but then I decided just to make this a hanging greenery with some ferns. So I'm taking these ferns that I found at Walmart. I've used these several times in my DIY projects, but I really love them. I think they're so fresh for summer and I kind of admire ferns for some reason because I have a hard time keeping them alive. So I do like to use some real ferns and some fake ferns. So this is going to be my ode to the fake fern, but they are really pretty. I'm going to share with you guys in just a minute how to make them look a little bit more realistic. So you're just going to layer them in and around your garden planter tin. And now I'm just going in with some brown craft paper to secure my ferns. This will stabilize. I didn't use really enough styrofoam to get them really stable. So the brown craft paper is kind of a neat little trick that you all can use when you're doing an indoor faux garden planter and you're like me and you don't have quite enough styrofoam. Um, but just go ahead and pop it in there and kind of bend it in and around your little fern setup. And then I did have some um, old kind of dead leaf greenery that's going to act as moss. I'm out of my moss or my Excelsior grass, which is nice to have, but I did save some of this. Um, it was just from the winter. I collected it in and around when a bunch of my plants died. So if you guys have the moss though or Excelsior grass, that would work as well. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and nail a nail to the wall. This is gonna support my planter. You could also use a command strip, but again, I'm using what I have. And this is going to support my little wire garden planter. Also just take two pieces of wire or zip ties to go ahead and wire that onto your planter piece. Again, use what you have. This is what I have on hand. And then I'm just gonna wire that onto that top rung and that's gonna securely stay on there. And I just absolutely love how this came out. I think it's so high end for next to nothing. Also, here's a quick tip for you all to take, make your faux ferns look a little bit more real. You just take them and bend them down and kind of curl them. So you just kind of curl them out and around. When you get them at the store, they're going to be flat, but to make them look more real, how a fern would look, you want to kind of bend them over and a little bit down. That's just a quick little tip for me to you to help your faux fern look a little bit more real. And these are so great because they never die on you, which I absolutely love. For the next DIY, I want to take this 2X Rust-Oleum Ultra Coverage spray paint and I'm just going to spray paint these baskets that I found at the thrift store. I found them several months ago and I really wanted to give them a cohesive look. So I'm going to spray them all one color and this is a great tip if you have some thrift store goodies and they're all kind of wonky colors and they had these baskets had some stains on them. They just weren't looking like the best. So I thought, well, why not make 
make them cohesive and I can use them in my crafting studio area for storage and also they'll look really cute. So I ended up giving them one really heavy coat of spray paint and then I'm going to come back in later and give them some chalk paint coating but this was just the spray paint coverage. Sometimes it does take a couple of days to get some of these projects done. So this is going to be a part one and then I'll share with you guys a part two on how I finish these baskets out. But this is a fun way to give some of your thrift store or flea market goodies more of a cohesive look, especially if you're going for a shabby chic look. So I wanted to share with you all how to create kind of a cool little vintage chic vignette. I've got this old mirror that I redid back behind and I have it placed on top of a garden cart. I have my little floral planner next to it and then a little vintage picture and then this lamp that actually wasn't vintage but I painted it white to go along with the Victorian um, lampshade. So fun little way just to set something out and then you can even add like some little china teacups or plates. Let me know as always what was your favorite DIY in this video. I also want to let you all know that I'm going to be doing a giveaway very soon so make sure you're subscribed to this channel and also pop over to my Facebook and follow me over there. I'm really excited to share this giveaway with you guys so definitely stay tuned for that. for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, share with a friend, and give this video a like if you like what you all see. It is a blessing and an honor to have you all watch this video, and all of your kind comments just mean the world to me. They inspire me, and they inspire those around you. I also have a these Romantic Home Facebook group page. It's totally free to join. Pop over there, request to join. I'll approve your request, and you can share photos of your home decor and DIY projects. I love to see what you guys are up to and for everybody that's over there sharing their ideas and crafts. Thank you guys so much. You guys inspire me. You have no idea. I also have all of these romantic home Instagram page. I do share behind the scenes little sneak peeks, recipes, condensed videos over on my Instagram page. So definitely follow me over there. I would love to have you. Thank you guys again for being here. It is such a blessing and an honor. I love you to the moon and back. I cannot wait for the next video. Remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. Until then, we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.